Welcome everybody to the Kemper Old Boy Network podcast. Today we are joined uh, with our special guest and you know him as the president of the Alumni Association, uh, James Hallam. Uh, thank you for being here, James. I appreciate it. Uh, Good morning. And I know you in, are incredibly busy this weekend and thank you for taking the time out and being able to do this with us. I really appreciate it, sincerely. Uh, go ahead, James, tell me what class you're from and give me kind of a brief description of what years you attended uh, Kemper and... Yeah, we'll move on from there. I want to kind of focus this uh, podcast directly on this weekend, so we'll move through that quickly and then get on to everything that you and the Alumni Association have worked so hard for over the last couple of years and everything that you guys have been able to accomplish. So go ahead, the floor is yours. You bet. Thank you and glad to be here. So I attended Kemper in 86 and graduated in 1988 and then went on to college. I went to undergrad uh, at St. Ed's and then got my master's at SMU in Dallas. And um, going back to the Alumni Association and the museum in particular, we purchased the building in uh, late 2018, presented the blank canvas in 2019 at the 175th. And at that point in time, it really was a blank canvas. So since then, we created a triage on the third floor and started bringing over paper archives and the larger archives. And then uh, the pandemic hit. Of course, the whole world shut down. So I don't, I, I don't want to jump too far forward. Please. First, let's talk about uh, there had to be some stuff done prior to all of this work there sure. were some structural things that had to be taken care of the building you had to do some yes. of that a little bit first once you guys pur purchased the building you want to talk through that a little bit absolutely and it's funny they the structural and the fire go hand in hand so when we took possession of the building originally there was the standard paint uh flooring uh, just updating doorknobs and making things work and all the things that you would have just to have a business be compliant. So that took from, I guess that was October of 2019 and the pandemic really settled in in March. Is that fair? Yeah, I think that's 20, a fair assessment. Is that 20? Yeah. So, I guess what really, I don't know if Boonville per se was in a quarantine, but I know Texas, the city's in Texas. And so for most of the directors, we couldn't travel. So we couldn't get back up there. Then we had the fire, which was a fire that happened two doors down. And actually everyone will see, it's kind of sad actually. There are just two blank spots um, on the uh, river side of the museum. Um, but when the fire happened, there was smoke damage, no fire damage in our space, but we had to have the building remediated. Black Memorial was out there for probably two straight weeks. All the archives got moved back into our storage facility and that happened from about 11 o'clock at night when the fire uh, started till about three o'clock in the morning. There was a band of probably eight or nine volunteers that came together to get the archives out in just like the most unbelievable timing. And so from that, to answer your question specifically about upgrades, then we were looked at painting again uh, there was some definite damage in the basement. Uh, there was about uh, five feet of water, so the HVAC system was completely submerged. That was a total loss. Um, there was some, um, is that called tough po pointing cement work? Yeah, tough uh, Down there that needed to be done. Um, and so then we start back the rebuilding. Uh, speaking of tough pointing, jo Joey Rohrer, uh, Christie's brother, who's also an alumni, he came by and donated his services and did 
the interior on the second floor, we call it the library, the mezzanine. Uh, you'll see that work, uh, actually do donated his work, which we're grateful to him. But basically a lot of uh, little things that kind of added up to a bigger project. And of course, it's the pandemic and we're in a remote city, so it's hard to get laborers and contractors. Um, so a lot of the work we did ourselves, um, kind of now coming in, let's say the pandemic quarantine portion has been lifted and people are traveling again. So we've got a crew of about four or five of us and I'm talking now, we're in July, July and August. And so we are committing now to a two weeks on, three weeks off model. And it's really an on, all hands on deck. So let me kind of set up the structure and then you can start asking questions about it. So first floor is gonna have basically class pictures and standard bookcases and display cases. So we're gonna have our heavier artifacts. And then as you work your way through the first floor, there'll be a bar. You'll have the older battalion photos from the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. And it's interesting when you get back to the 40s, our battalion size was in like the 800s. And that's a function of World War, pre-World War II, and after the war, just because Kemper being a ROTC, junior ROTC as a feeder for the armed services. And it's truly amazing too, even back then, how uh, that school, even during the Great Depression, was keeping its enrollment in. You know, that that's that, that's an attestament to uh, the business structure and the business model of, of that time of educating people, I want to uh, like to point out to the viewers. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of interesting history even around those 20s in, in the collapse and even in the 30s. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean no, to No, I, I yeah. couldn't agree more. And, and you see that in, in World War, pre-World War I uh, as well with enrollment numbers being at their height. So as you work yourself, so in the back there's a bar and it's your standard bar setup. Uh, and that was very deliberate. We believe that old boys will want to hang out and talk about their experience and enjoy camaraderie and fellowship. So as you work your way up this, then we out, excuse me, out in the back, there's a, uh, we had a pad poured out there. And so we have barbecue smoking pits out there and cornhole and washers and folding chairs, all kinds of things for hanging out. And as you work your way up to the mezzanine or the second floor, it's a library. You'll kind of come in, you can sit and look at class yearbooks and we've assembled some four inch binders, three ring binders that have numerous amounts of uh, archives, uh, any three by five, 35 millimeter prints, five by seven, eight by 10. Um, so images, paper documents, and it's really impressive. Uh, the school has so much heritage and so much information that was published, printed, and distributed, it's crazy. And I would like to point out, we, we were having a discussion before we started this podcast. Uh, you were talking about everything that the Alumni Association has been doing and how much of a, you guys had over like a million artifacts and you guys had to category all of these things sure. and, and you did it into 15, you wanna explain yeah, that a little th bit? Yeah, thank you. So as you work your way up to the third floor, we broke it down because the building is a, it's a hundred feet, is that right? Or is it 200 feet rather in length? So it's, it's skinny long, it's 20 by 200. So for the first quarter of the third floor, we created a um, uniform museum where in the center we have a glass display case from admin Inside it is hanging uh, eight to 10 uniforms from various years. And then uh, surrounding that, we have mannequins. There's actually mannequins throughout the entire uh, museum uh, from various years and sports, etc. But beyond that is what we call the triage. 
and it's behind pipe and drape. So we took from 1844 till the school closed in 02. I want to say it was 12 tables in 15 year increments. And so if you'll see it, there's pieces of paper that say, you know, 1844, go up 15 years to 2002. And first we just brought over all these boxes and they're just all stacked up and you're very overwhelmed. So first let's categorize by year increment. So that was process one. So then you're looking like, wow, there's a lot of artifacts from like 2002 to like the seventies. Then it gets a little thin, then there's some more down in the 40s of the pile. And then it gets thinner and thinner as you get down to 1844. And then from that, you have to prioritize what's going in a binder, what needs to go behind display glass locked, because the things that are in binders are gonna have movement. People are interested, people wanna read it. There is a lot of documents that we have duplicates of. The reason why I bring this up is because every old boy has Kemper memorabilia, things that were important to him or her. So it'll be important that for the items that our old boys are tired of looking at, to get those into the museum so we can upgrade existing inventory and get that on display for other old boys to enjoy. But going back to this triage center, it's not just paper documents. I mean, we have steel plaques from buildings, all the like in loving memory of and pictures and all this stuff as you can imagine. Because when the school was closed and the auction happened, we weren't the only people bidding, the Alumni Association, it was open to the public as well. So you can kind of imagine like a fire drill of sorts of just buying anything and everything. And the things that we have are up on that third floor. I might also mention, in addition to the archives that the association owns and has in stock, we also, I've talked to General Gracie over at MMA a few times, and they have a warehouse of documents and archives as well that we'll go and grab those. And then of course, we've been getting some bequeaths from other old boys estates and uh, MMA uh, Wentworth also has a small cachet. So all these archives will find their home uh, in the Kemper Museum, but it's gotta go up three flights of stairs, get white gloved and then prioritized and then put in, a, in, a, in its kind of representation area. It's also, I, I think, imperative that we express our gratitude to our sister schools uh, for the help with that. Uh, thank you to MMA as well as Wentworth, uh, to the Alumni Associations for helping us out through this process. I would like to give thanks. Um, great, yeah, Wentworth and Hitner and Balbo and MMA, great alumni presidents and good stewards of their, of their heritages. So let's talk about the man hours behind everything that you guys have done and been able to accomplish in this last two years, uh, at some points I'm sure begrudgingly, but yeah, I was gonna say it is what it is. Well, let, let me just say this, and I'm getting emotional just talking about it. The amount of effort, let me back up too. So, Christy can probably correct me on this. I think I got pulled in 2016-ish. Yeah. I got a call from the president at that time, uh, Doug Humphreys, who by the way, did an incredible job of holding this band of brothers and sisters together and everybody has strong personalities, oh my goodness. But then uh, I called Harmon uh, and said like, well, what, what is all this? Because I honestly, I mean, I had been in the background, but I hadn't been participating because I didn't even realize really there was any kind of anything being formalized uh, up here, even for Old Boy Weekend. But anyway, long story short, I got pulled in in 2016 and then became president in 2019. And then after the pandemic, and we started rolling in August, it turned into every three weeks, there was about four or five of us uh, 
and we came up here. I flew into Columbia and Mike Steptoe would pick me up and he came on board a little bit later. He, he is now serving again. He just got sworn in uh, by our nominating committee and approved by the board two weeks ago. We'll present that slate. It's already on the website now uh, tomorrow night. But if I had to put some sort of math to it, I guess I would say Thursday through Sundays, and you can calculate from uh, August till this weekend, and the viewers can calculate the dates. But I mean, like, I I'm serious. I spoke, it it's hard to not get emotional. I spoke two weekends ago at the Missouri Military Academy Old Boy weekend uh, at their uh, alumni association luncheon uh, so the the general kicked it off and then i spoke to their uh, old boys about the importance of getting involved and especially because your school is still open and they still have the same heartaches that every other school has you know the the families that attend schools in america have a budget and usually the cost of schools is more than what a family can afford. So here's a gap. And we, we hear this all the time, this gap amount. And so schools are constantly looking for gap financing, gap scholarships, gap support. So I, I, I really explain to them, you, you don't know what you have until it's gone. And when it's gone, it's been ripped away from you and you can never get it back. So take action now support your alumni association, support your school, and hopefully they don't have to experience what Wentworth and Kemper had to experience. Because in the very end, and I've gone through all of our financials, yes, we had debt. And the debt was more than the expenses that the school was bringing in from tuition, and the structure or the head count was also more robust than it had ever been with a junior college program, with an athletics department that was giving out scholarships. So it's, it's kind of simple math. When you've got more going out than you have coming in and you don't have gap fi financing or your endowment built up enough, you have a math problem. So I really spoke about that to them, but it is important because this is all that Kemper and Wentworth has now today. And we won't be around forever, but we're here today. And it's important that all of us get involved, get involved with Kemper and get involved with MMA and get involved with Wentworth. I can only imagine, would you estimate ballpark tens of thousands of man hours? Uh, between or, everybody. Yeah, easily. between every, everybody. Easily. Yeah. Easily. That is, and it's all volunteer. Uh, yep. it's, yeah, I mean, it's it's important yep. to, to put that out. Yeah, uh, I don't mean to back up too far. So mm -hmm. the the building itself was insured and did the insurance cover that fire damage or how did that all work out? We do have an insurance policy. I think our check exactly was 14,000. I was gonna say, we don't have to get into numbers. Yeah, but, no, but our, so yeah, let's talk numbers just for a second, because I don't know if our viewers know this, but our tax return or what's called a 990 is on our website. We publish that, between, it just depends on what the CPA gets done between June and, you know, let's just say August. Okay. But our financials are like day to day, month in, month out. Those will be available, and they're available for anybody to look at if anybody wants to see those. Those are like QuickBook files. Uh, those will be, those are available, like we'll have printed copies uh, Saturday night at the... It's important that we point this out that it's complete transparency through the Alumni Association oh, yeah. to everybody. And yeah. feel free to ask any questions anytime of yeah. the Alumni Association. They will provide you answers, maybe not may not be immediately because we all have jobs too and other stuff going on but yeah they will get back to you anyways go well ahead. yeah no and, and i appreciate that call so it's a it's a non-profit and all of our information all of our financials are available uh at any moment we don't have i mean we'll push them to you via email etc but i kind of lost my train of thought what we were talking about but anyway that information is out there. Were we talking about man hours? We yeah, where were we talking about man hours? And then we switched over into, oh, the insurance. Yes, yes. thank you. Yeah. So so our insurance is basically your standard 
play. It's a million dollars of liability, and then you have your line items. And I think fire was a hundred thousand dollars, but really what what they paid for was the AC and the remediation for Black and Warren. So they didn't want to pay for pay for paint because just the adjuster. So, but I mean, yeah, we had insurance, but there wasn't a big there wasn't a big payday. So, well, yeah, obviously, yeah. I, no insurance company is ever going to give you a big payday. Everybody, yeah, yeah there's. Yeah. Insurance is not a get rich quick scheme, that's no, for sure. No, uh, no. Yeah, maybe maybe back in the 70s or 80s, you might be able to get away with that. Yeah, but they're day. smart. They're Which leads me into my next thing. Let's plug uh, the 1844 Association. Let's yeah. plug uh, funding. Uh, yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, let, let's, uh, I'll let you go ahead and explain so, that, viewers. So, so we put together in our bylaws, there is a section called membership. And we put together the 1844 Society just because of when the school was formed and its first class. And so for $18.44 a month, you are a member and you get your name on a plaque, your name on the donor wall of the website, you get a t-shirt, and there's different levels. We've mixed it up where you can do infinite, which is $18.44 a month for your lifetime. There's a sustaining member where you can give $1,844, uh, I said cents, uh, for a one-time payment. There's a plaque for that. But on its face, we use the school's formation year as the basis for the 1844 Society membership. This is the active membership of the Kemper Alumni Association, and they actually have a nominating committee and they have a board seat on the Kemper Alumni Association board. So Mike Steptoe is the uh, 1844 Society board member. The, the idea here was to always have a bench feeding, this is your board, feeding the board. So as directors step down and roll off, we always have people within the alumni association, within you know the, the greater alumni uh, that want to serve to participate. And so that just got kicked off literally in the last year since the new website. And, and I might just plug the website. If you haven't gone out there, we're constantly adding things. We just added the Kemper store. We started with four promotional products. It's I'm sure y'all know this, but people like ask for stuff all, do you have coffee mugs? Do you have a hoodie? So we just took the most requested items. We started with four. I think it's a challenge coin, a mug, a hat, a t-shirt, and a hoodie, five. And um, they're out there and they get shipped through Famco. They're a promotional company. Because to be honest, we weren't good at promotional stuff and I wanted to offload that. So basically our portion is just to have a website so that's out there as well. But the 1844 Society is to mobilize alumni, to give them some skin in the game, to have them participate in uh, the uh, Alumni Association. Is there an ability for uh, our old boys and our alumni, let's just say we're, everybody's finishing in their financials like in December or something, and they're like, hey, I got a little extra money, I need to donate. Can they make a one-time donation to the same thing? Like, I wanna do this for tax purposes, let me get this donation out and I can yes. claim it at the end of the year. Is that under the same spot or? Yes, that's a great question. So what we've found is that people wanna be generous in addition to their $18.44. $18 and we have different levels from you know, a dollar up to whatever, anyone for that matter, but especially old boys. And uh, those those gifts get uh, recognized, they get a plaque, they also are on the website. But yes, so, and I'll take it a step further, we've had some success with um, life insurance and uh, estates. So old boys that wanted to put 2%, 5%, their, half their estate, uh, to the Alumni Association. That's how the museum is here today. We actually had two significant bequeaths and that's what has bankrolled the activities that we're all enjoying now. 
Awesome, awesome. And on the, to close out the 1844 Society, uh, we have literally not marketed it at all. I've guilted some 88 guys by a group text. We have a little over 70 uh, active members right now without marketing at all. Okay. Yeah. Now we're marketing it. There you go. <laughs> um, let's talk about this weekend. Yes. We are getting ready to kick this thing off. We got places to go, so we can't talk too much or too long on this podcast, but let's go ahead and talk about what our event schedule looks like for this weekend you, and all the work that you guys put forward to this amazing weekend. Thank so. you, yes. Very excited about it. So at 10 a.m. we have the flag raising ceremony on campus. And I don't want to miss anything, so I'm gonna cheat. Oh no, yeah, by all means. Um, and then I believe we have the Founders Day ceremony at 1 p.m. That's over at Walnut Grove Cemetery. Um, and that's where we'll you know, pay our respects to F.D. Kemper. And, um, then at 4 p.m., the big invocation and um, ceremonies for the museum will kick off. We have the MMA drill team, Fusiliers and Color Guard. They'll all present on Main Street. We have worked with the city with the, we had to go before the uh, city council and get approval uh, to shut down Main Street because that's a major highway. And so from spring to Morgan, it'll be closed down, but we'll have the MMA band, drill team, and fuselage that are mul- ah, They will march up. Let me back up. We will have the MMA drill team, fuselage, and band march up Morgan Street, hang a ride on Main, and then there'll be barricades between Main and uh, Morgan and Spring. And then they will present, we'll do a uh, ribbon cutting with the Chamber of Commerce. The president of the chamber will be presenting. I've invited the mayor to uh, have some remarks. Um, and then um, we'll do the ribbon cutting. The uh, color guard will retire the Kemper colors permanently into the museum. And that'll then the museum will be open for business. And when I say business, for people to walk around and enjoy it, we'll have, uh, I think Mike's cooking hamburgers, hot dogs, we'll have Everything's free, beer, wine, uh, water, soda. Uh, then Saturday, tomorrow, we have the tri-military um, shoot with MMA and Wentworth. That reminds me, did you bring those shotguns up? Yes, thank you. Uh, tomorrow, we have the tri-military uh, shoot with Wentworth and MMA, and uh, you know Wentworth has been on a terror. They literally, but uh, MMA is serious this year. They have 21 shooters. And I know Wentworth, I think, has eight. We have five to six. Uh, so that'll be exciting. That is at Lake, La, how do you say, Latuana? Oh, I mean, I don't know. Uh, Latuana Sportsman's Club. <sighs> yeah, and Lee Summit. Oh, yeah, Latuana. There yeah, you go, yeah. Latuana. That, yeah. There you go. Uh, then the Kemper Museum will be open the entire time, all weekend long. Then at 5.30, a social hour for the alumni banquet. This is over at the Fraternal Order of Eagles. So we've switched it up this year. In previous years, we've been over at the Isle. This is a new venue of sorts for the association. So we'll see how this goes. Then, you know, that kicks off into the evening. Uh, the museum is open at 9 p.m. after that and then closes at midnight. Then Sunday morning, we have the farewell breakfast at the museum. I'll leave you all with that. Um, and then everybody departs. And so that's our weekend. And that's a wrap for you. When are you coming back next then? <laughs> well, I'll be back probably, and I'll probably take a few weeks off, but we have a to have to reinstall uh, our rail system that hangs our our artwork. We had one of the cleats was getting loose, so we we had to pull that down. Actually, a part of it fell, and um, so we've had to remove some of our class pictures. But we'll drop in another rail and uh, get everything back up. And so I want to take a little bit of a break. Well, hopefully you can catch a few more cowboy games. I saw you were yeah. at Monday night. Yeah. That was a they that was a pretty kick, good. Uh, they kicked some tail. Pretty good uh, game for the old boys. They yeah. did. Uh, they yeah. did a uh, pretty good damage on them. <laughs> they look like uh, world class. <laughs> so, what 
what is the future of the Alumni Association in the short term? Let's talk about some sure. some goals that now that you guys have achieved so much. And I know yeah. taking a break is probably going to be among one of those goals, taking a breather a little yeah. bit, collecting. Yeah. But what, what, yeah. what kind of directions do you so, think? So, yeah, absolutely. I, I think the the natural thing is, is if we want to do a capital campaign to take these two buildings beside the building, that's that's fine. I think that's going to happen organically. But the other one I'm about to hone in on is, uh, the other article is basically creating uh, alumni, uh, not alumni, what does that damn thing say? I don't have my phone, but it's basically building our network in other cities. Uh, there's a technical description to it. So you've got Old Boy Network, uh, Echo Company, you have the Alumni Association. I want to start to really network everybody together mm -hmm. and, and start to really work on that. When I said, I don't even know what that means, but um, I want to try to connect everybody in some real time way and start really building out that network stronger just so that there's not silos. I'm not suggesting that there are, but I think that we could do a better job of having a more cohesive network state and regional representation and all that kind I think of deal that's actually you might have been reading our bylaws i think that might be in there so. okay yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 exactly well in of course if we can assist in any way we would yeah. love to you know participate that in in that uh can i talk on that real quick yeah go ahead yeah, yeah so the reason like right now for like all of our website not like my secretary, or I shouldn't even, she's my executive assistant. She's actually my director of government affairs. Uh, she's the one that's handling all this stuff that you see. Uh, she's building all the assets. She, she creates that asset library and then I have it on Dropbox. And then I just drop those at different intervals. But my point is, is that we'll continue. It'd be nice though if we had like a, a, a larger group where we just put out information and then everybody puts the information out at real time. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. so it's so there's it's autonomous, it's not independent, not independent and you know Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a yeah. I see what you're going for. Uh I'm because sure. there are probably things that you know, I didn't mean to cut off no. cut you off the, there's probably things that you guys do that y'all would like more support on. You know what I'm trying to say? And like to turn the light bulb on, so to speak. Well, and I think essentially we're all trying to go for the same goal here. I mean, I, in my mind, is like we're trying to uh, yes. set, preserve whatever legacy we can right. as long as we can. And yeah, that's uh, it's an amazing, obviously, some of us hold this ground. It's very sacred ground here yeah. in, on yeah. the limestone bluffs of the Missouri River. So- And I can talk about the, the future where, where I see it. Yeah, go ahead. So, of course, I'm party of one right now on my vision, but for the museum itself and the alumni association as it is today, I would say our last old boy, so 2002, 18, they're probably in their 40s, late 30s or 40s right now. So probably by 2050, we could probably call it from an act active standpoint. And so I feel like the museum can be bequeathed to either the convention and tourism and that with Boonville and they can, because we have a partnership already now. Uh, I went down and negotiated that with Laura. It's a very simple, very handshake. It's like they do tours three times a week. You bring a tour bus in of people, you want to charge them fine. We'll split the revenue with you. It's honestly, the building's open for free right now. And, um, but at some point when we're not active around 2050, you know, let's go ahead and surrender this over to companies that will keep it alive or, or the city. We'll just have to see. But the point here is to keep this thing, its importance and rel relevance up because if schools like MMA are still going to be open, we'd love for their students and just people that live in Boonville and our kids and their kids can come and see what what we did, what we were about, and you know, learn more about Kemper. 
That is awesome. Yeah. That's an excellent vision too. Yeah. I, I, I think most of the viewers could sit there in North South. Um, random question. Please. So let's say for some of our alumni, everybody's busy. A lot of us are whatever, raising kids or whatever. Maybe they're not able to make it to an old boy weekend. Let's say by chance they're passing through this state. Is there any way they can get in contact if they did it well enough uh, in advance to where they might be able to come in and check out the uh, museum on their own? That's a great question. And yes, I'm actually updating the website on the museum portion. So right now it is by appointment only and Laura Gramlich is who handles all of our museum tours. You can email her or call her and she will meet you at the museum and coordinate a schedule to allow you to come see it. Okay. So, yes. Excellent. Excellent. Absolutely. So, for all the viewers out there that listen to this, hey, if you're ever traveling through, why not stop by and spend some hours in your alma mater and check it out? It's a, it's an amazing thing. It's, people are going to really be impressed. Uh, and there will be plenty of photos and some videos posted. Uh, we will do kind of a virtual tour on the Old Boy Network. I don't know if the Alumni Association has already set something up for that as we, well. We I haven't. Really you know, that might be a great first step for a partnership. Yeah. I was, you guys apparently have all the media assets. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a special thanks to uh, Darren and Christy yeah. for bringing up the better part of... Uh, this looks like real estate gear. <laughs> it, it is. It is. <laughs> There's going to be a drone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that yeah, actually... Darren brought some drones too for some drone footage. I mean, of, honestly, of thing, I know so. this is not part of our segment here, but if you guys want to get in there and film this thing and present it, by all means. Well, anything we can do to promote it get to help here. to help yeah. us uh, facilitate everything. Yeah, so, please. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, let's. Is your son joining us today? Is he coming up with the? You group? know, I actually I texted. Uh, Robert Silbaugh, he is handles development over there. And so when they bring an abbreviated set, because so Hale is my son, and he plays the guitar. So the band has two parts to it. The marching band, which is the traditional instrument. And then they have their electric band, like their drummer, the bassist. And all. Let, so let's stop have... really quick to clarify. Oh, uh, sorry. His son is a cadet oh, over at yes. MMA. So yes, just sorry. so everybody knows here real quick. So uh, go ahead now. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, Hale is a sophomore. This is his second year and he is in the band. And I don't know, I, you know, at first I was like, well, I'm assuming he would be, but then when they said they're bringing an abbreviated uh, kit, um, I texted uh, Robert and so hope maybe he'll answer me, but I don't know yet. Hopefully he'll be here. Okay. okay. Yeah, that'd be great. I, I would imagine he would, but yeah. I was going to say, you never know. Yeah. You never know. Maybe his duties were required there. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I, this is kind of concludes my portion of the interview. I got a couple things to plug, but before I do that, um, balls in your court. What else would you like yeah. to talk about? Well, one, I just wanted to say thank you for the time and allowing the Alumni Association to participate in your podcast and also allowing the association and me personally to be a member of the Old Boy Network. Uh, I post a lot of things about Kemper on y'all's network and you guys have always been great about letting us post there. And then if there's anything I can ever do or the association can ever do, uh, we're here and we're open for business. I would just say in closing, that really the most important thing for people uh, to consider is joining the 1844 Society. Um, that literally will allow us to continue building out what everyone will get to see uh, in the days to come, really the hours to come. And, I, and we've really, the association has created something very special. I mean, if you go in there and you don't get emotional, then you don't have a heartbeat. We have Kleenex boxes all over. <laughs> oh, I'm serious. <laughs> On all three floors, all over the place because it's intense. I'm really excited. It's to intense. Experience this yeah. this afternoon. It's it, intense. It's yeah. going to be an amazing time. Yeah, it's intense. Thank you so much for squeezing us in, allowing My us pleasure. the opportunity to to do this and get this out there. Uh, we are essentially just attempting to promote any camper. Uh, alumni, old boy, pre, prior student whatsoever. And uh, 
obviously that's our goal with what we do, which brings me into my next segment, uh, or my next plug is anybody to our alumni, to our old boys, uh, please, uh, if you run an independent company, a business, uh, get a hold of the Kemper Old Boy Network. We would love to put your uh, information on the page. We want to promote uh, old boy support, uh, alumni support of each other in our regional and state and local levels for each other. And if we can help facilitate anything uh, whatsoever, it doesn't cost anything. We'll just put your business up on a website just so people know and people can get out there. Oh, uh, I do want to talk I about have something that. On, on that too. I was going to say, I, you, I, I remember paying money to a company for the, uh, what do I want to say? The, uh, or, uh, my words are not doing well right now. Uh, roster of students. Uh, what do I want to say? Uh, oh, oh, PCI. Yeah, yeah the PCI. Directory. Yeah, the directory. There we so go. I'll, yeah. Yeah, that's an important one. But I, I wanted to say thank y'all for that business feature because I was able to purchase some cheeses and some charcuterie. Oh, <laughs> there from, you go, Scott uh, Dobbins. Yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, kick ass, dude. Yeah. So good. I don't know if I. I just. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, thank you. you for doing that. Yeah, I saw that and I ordered mine. I got them in the mail. They were amazing. Yeah, and with that being said, <laughs> uh, Scott is not able to make it this weekend because he's oh. down there hammering away there. But hey, uh, we're in football season right now. We are in holiday season around the corner. Uh, charcuterie boards go great with everything, whether it be your random football parties or yeah. your holiday get togethers or whatever. Please keep that in mind, as well as every other business. Please look on our page, see how you can support other old boys, other networks. Uh, shout out to Scott Dobbins with uh, Eureka yeah, Charcuterie he's, he's for sure. Yeah, threw in a nice, uh, it's like a picnic blanket or blanket. It was. Yeah, it was a nice gesture. Good deal. Yeah, let, let me talk about this PCI partnership or the alumni directory because this is actually important because this is about to, to ship. So the last time we had done a directory, 2015? Yeah. And it was time to update the uh, directory records. So I reached back out to this company and uh, basically got the assets from the last time, the uh, Excel uh, data file, et cetera, et cetera. So each alumni that was on the list should have received a mailer and a uh, request to update your information. And that process has taken a year, uh, but what's gonna pop out the other side is a really, really special, and I'll show you all after the segment, uh, 175th anniversary alumni directory that starts to ship uh, mid-January. I just approved the final artwork. I'll, I'll show it to you. It's going to be a really neat thing. I'll tell you what we did. We put together a survey of tell us five things that you remember from your Kemper experience. This is really badass. And the top five attributes we listed, we ranked them. Like if leadership was 20, it was leadership first all the way down to the fifth one. Then I went back through the cadet manual and I looked at the cadet prayer, but then I looked, I, I can't remember what section is off the top of my head, but those five attributes, and there's 12 like statements that you're gonna walk away from Kemper with. And those five attributes were listed in those statements multiple times. It was really cool. So we have that uh, listed in the directory as well. But basically, this is going to be an updated directory, so you can reach out to your classmates and network and you know people's emails, cell phones, whatever uh, folks uh, provided. Uh, if you didn't get a mailer, there was also an opportunity we listed it. Uh, on social media to just mail in to the Alumni Association. We got some of those as well. And for the viewers, let's say by the time you're watching this, uh, you you know that you're not on the directory or whatever, please still get in contact. We would love to add you eventually or at least have your contact information on file so we can actually use it. And That's a good plug. Go to the Alumni Association yeah. website, kmsalumni.org. And I think it's keep us updated or contact. There's a place on there where you can put your 
flash your your pedigree information and then because the next step is we're going to do mailers okay like email mailers excellent yeah excellent yeah, yeah, excellent yeah. so I think we should wrap it up because we got places to go yeah. and things to do. So yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you so much again, James, for being here. Uh, thank you for everything that you you've got done. It. And uh, you I got appreciate it. it. On behalf of the Kemper Old Boy Network, we will uh, hopefully see you very soon. And non quam, non paratus. Amen. Amen.